Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of SideQuest. I know it says episode nine, uh, there is no episode eight. We took one side quest off and to keep the numbers in line with our episodes, we're just gonna label this one nine. So if you're looking for eight, keep looking, it's uh, not there. So we're gonna be doing it this way tonight. I'm super excited. We have, well, originally we were gonna be doing a solo episode, but something's changed and we'll get into that as we roll this out. But for now, for now, let me take us over to our guest star. And I say guest star because Nora's not here tonight. Who are you playing tonight here, Kelly? Oh man, I should have changed my, my camp, my, uh, my lights. I am uh, Do it reprising, now. My, I'm reprising my brief role as Dr. Sophia Martzen. She uh, has been introduced a couple of times, yeah, yeah. although I think her biggest splash was, let me look at the screen while I'm talking about this. Her biggest splash was basically one-shotting one of the uh, Vogue robbers. Oh, that's right. In that's the, right. In we the season opener. Yeah, season opener, we all played Volg, and she blew that person apart. Um, for a little background, because I don't think we've ever explained it, you played Martin for a while. Yeah, I think... Gosh, it was at least a year. It was at least a year. Do we want to um, share her, her secret, or are we just going to let that slide through this episode? Um... That's up to you. I don't, I don't know what secret you're talking about, Eric. Nope, she's a very well respected. It. Nope, she's a very well then. respected therapist within the world of uh, Eng within the continent of Engrad. So uh, she's human, correct? Yep. I mean, human, red, uh, red blooded human. Uh, therapist, loaded, pretty well off, if I remember <laughs> pretty correctly. Pretty well off. Uh, didn't start well off, right? She wasn't rich when she was born or anything. Her her family was, uh, they weren't poor they were like an upper middle class but they spent a lot of money into uh her upbringing ah okay gotcha so they they dump money into her yeah that makes sense that makes sense uh cadra born originally correct yes yes and when we played this we played in a northern continent that no one on stream has seen yet we played far north out where there was far, like ogres and giants and shit far uh, north Far north. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll visit there eventually. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how long the crew makes it through this season <laughs> into season three, um, and if Ogre Force takes over. So let me set the tone for us. Uh, we are going to be helping Olivier and Howitz. Uh, the goal is she is under uh, Doctor Martin's care. Uh, is kind of a. I guess the beginning of like, hey, your choice is, do you want to go to the asylum or do you want to go through therapy to see if we can help you out because your family has damaged you so bad? It's I, I, I really believe her choices were. Oh, death. Cap, capital punishment. Well, yeah, yeah capital, capital punishment, punishment yeah. Yeah. or the asylum. Yeah. And she's so. not in the asylum. So and she was on the train when it crashed in our episode uh, that went off the rails down into the Arcodius crater. She was present for that and has made her way back. She could have fled and she did not, which is, yes. says a lot about her. In our last episode, she was locked in the morgue and Nora's place. So <laughs> there's, she's went through some changes. So I'm going to set us up for this. I'm going to take us over to our map. And we have uh, we have something special we're going to do with this in a minute. But our map is the train. Uh, the train here is one of the ones on the Tide Runner. The next couple of episodes, we're going to be traveling on the Tide Runner, making our way to Kadra to take all of the souls that came from the Bargast that got put into the lantern and give a good chunk of them to the true faith to free up space within purgatory. And for those who haven't figured this out yet, and this is just a little... It's so a little glimmer of uh, information from me as the GM. Gravelighters are the world's grim reapers, so to speak. They're not undead, though. They're tied to the lantern, and they help souls and ferry them to purgatory. The only purgatories are these lanterns. They have Nero's lantern. It's the very first one that was made. Um, it has two very powerful spirits bound to it. And we're going to start there. And starting there, let me scroll through our train car. We're gonna start with a knock on the door from Howitz. Uh, she knocks, the train is getting ready to leave Merrifield. Uh, we're not currently in motion, it is static. Um, it is nighttime, even though the map does not look nighttime, it is nighttime right now. 
and how it uh, knocks on Dr. Martson's door. Uh, she probably learned the hard way that just coming in is a bad idea. Yes. <laughs> um, Martson's kind of looking out the window, kind of taking a look at everything that's going on. Um, lots outside of construction. From, lots, lots of construction. Lots of construction. Yeah. Kind of surveying some of the destruction that's happened. And uh, as mm -hmm. the door opens, um, she'll turn to the to the main door and just call out, enter. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you, you have you permission hear her take to enter. A, you hear her take a deep breath. She walks in. She walks in. Uh, she is draped in a red, um, like, half cape. Not a cloak, but a half cape. She's in form-fitted, uh, dark, matte gray studded leather armor. Uh, she has um, a bracer on one arm. Uh, you know that she keeps uh, currently vials of blood in it because she is a vampire. Um, and she didn't realize or know why. You have been helping her with that. And she keeps those with her as a way to satiate hunger without feeding on innocent people. Uh, she comes in, looks back and forth. She scopes the rooms. You see her eyes are red uh, at first, and they kind of fade away into her normal kind of golden tone. Her horns are up um, and they're pointed. She has very pale peach skin compared to normal. She says, I am um, here for, I, I, I guess, my meeting before we leave. Since I'm getting taken to Kadra, I assume to be put in prison. Nora locked me away in a damn morgue. She walks in. So what is your office like? And it looks like this first room is built for a Thomas. Everything is large scale here. Yes. So um, as uh, Howitz is muttering, I'm going to take three actions to study her just in case. Hold on a minute. Are you also an investigator? Yes. Dr. Okay. Dr. Marston, in terms of her class... Um, I had to convert her from a different system when we were playing Athanti and various things. I actually converted her from a Cypher system, and in breaking down what she did there versus Pathfinder 2E, Investigator seemed to be, God like, the best one-for-one for, one for what I had envisioned for Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. I, I, know, I, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> so uh, that means that she uh, comes in, uh, sees you watching her, and she goes, um, I'm assuming up to the, the therapy room. Um, yes. And as she kind of, she kind of gestures, uh, cause I don't think Martin's actually been on in the train cart. That's why, or not Martin. That's, uh, how it's, I don't think has actually been in the train cart. That's why Martin had said, no, you have permission not. to enter. You have yeah, permission no, to enter. No, probably not. She probably hasn't been here, uh, because it was just finished up like, maybe days, maybe before you're probably still waiting on some furniture. You're probably picking up some furniture out of Kadra because you right. can really get nice stuff here. A lot of this is refurbished things or pieces you had sent here yes. to set this up. Yes. Oh, she looks um, around and she, she would be the, like, oh, the, nice the, rugs. And she <laughs> kind of passes by. <laughs> the first floor is uh, definitely larger, larger sized furniture. Okay. Um, it, it seems hopefully fairly obvious considering everyone who travels on this train that this is meant for um, a Thomas in case any of them decide to seek her out. It's not that Marsden has any a Thomas patients currently uh, in mm -hmm. Maryfield, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, whoever, whoever needs that sort of, uh, psychological assistance, therapeutic assistance, um, Martin wants to make sure it's available for her and goodness knows you can't really get comfortable with your, with yourself if you can't get comfortable in a chair. No, so. no, not when you got to use, uh, <laughs> not when you got to use a full action to crawl through a five foot spot. Uh, right. so the top part of the rail cars are, this is a double, all the rail cars are two floors and the top one has a big 15 foot wide hall, usually rooms on each side or maybe small shops and stuff. The bottom cars are made for either the wealthy or very important cars. Uh, they could be engineering to uh, Martin's shop, to Nora's place, which has probably got that as well. The second floor would have a pathway and probably a storage up there or sleeping areas for the grave lighters. But also, there is a lot of first four things that are 
the Azure engine, uh, which is attached to this one on one side, and then Nora's office is on the other, which generates actual old school, turn of the century electrical power for things. Um, you have lamps in here that are lit in those old flickering Edison bulbs. Uh, there are plants in here, which are not something you normally get to see. And it is nice. It is well furnished. Uh, there is a step that goes up into the second area. And she kind of rounds her way, sees the setup. And she rounds over it and lays down. Like, just kind of hops on the chaise lounge and leans back immediately. And she goes, I see you didn't change the lounge. Um... Can I ask what exactly we're going over today? I, 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 I don't know why we keep doing this. I'm just going to get put in prison when we get to Kadra anyway. Um, I believe there's some sort of misunderstanding, Olivia. And you're not going to jail on Kadra. You're still under my custody. Wait, what do you, what do you mean? I'm not going to jail. Um, I apologize for what may have occurred in uh, Inspector Tenwick's office. Um, well, she doesn't trust me. I mean, she has no reason to. I chased her down and tried to kill her. Twice. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But um, because you have come back, and although she wasn't, she was a little iffy, like 50-50 on whether you were coming back to finish the job or if you're coming back for some other reason, but mm -hmm. she agreed to honor the custody agreement that we have. You're not, unless there are any crimes committed between now and getting back to the no, capital. None. No, none, none. I've done none. There's been no You're, other anything. I, I've just been doing what we've talked about. Uh, that train accident, I had nothing to do with. It just oh, happened no, to I, be on the train. No, I... I mean, you were there. I, I was there. I, I believe you. I witnessed okay. some of the people who had attempted to hijack the train. So um, is I don't think you would worth be I don't think you would bother associating with them to be perfectly honest. Uh, um should I um should I bring Dovan out as well or is it just us today? Um if Dovan's feeling up to it, uh I mean Dovan does whatever I ask. Uh, he's a little changed since this these and you see the, the fangs come out and she puts them back. It's like since this, he's a little different. Uh, I haven't seen him like this. The wood has changed. His his skin is um, like burnt, almost like burnt wood. Uh, it's very odd. Now, how many therapy sessions would you say Martin has done with Olivier up until now? Has she been seeing her for a little while? I think it's been at least six months because they found out, we found out the news that mm -hmm. she had been remanded into Mardson's custody sometime during that year of downtime. And Nora was not very pleased about it. So okay, I feel okay. like in order to have this type of relationship that we're um, displaying right now, I think there would have definitely been at least a couple of months of, se of sessions, therapy, you know, Shh. making sure that her work, work study <laughs> continues. Right. Yeah. I assume Marsden has got a shit ton of skills like she used to. So I would say, yes. can I get an occult and can I get, um, didn't you say you took therapy as a lore? Uh, yeah. So because I did the, between, because I did the one for one, Marsden is trained in every active skill. To sure, varying degrees, sure, yeah, and course, she did take she additional lore, psychological lore. Perfect, perfect. And before All we right. bring in our, our other guest star, which is going to turn this thing, I think, over into something totally different than what people are expecting. <laughs> Let me just make sure. Because I haven't actually had a chance to do this yet. Pursue a lead. I think that Yeah, pursue. Yeah, pursue a lead. Uh huh. Right. Yes. Yeah, keep using those terms. And I will say, uh, for those who don't know, um, uh, Martin was a skilled explorer slash therapist because she traveled a lot. So this idea of her being on a train with a therapy area is probably perfect. She was like the therapist version of like Dr. Indiana Jones. Yeah, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dr. Indy. Uh, well, that was a natural 20 on the occult. 
well, let's just start this off with nonsense, shall we? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was not expecting that. So and you then... would know these these things right oh, now about Lord. Devon. Devon is her um, her eidolon. She is a summoner, and that is a new class. It's not out in completion yet, but we will be seeing it fairly soon. Um, from from Pathfinder. I love the original, so I'm super happy that they are bringing it back. Hers is a primal Eidolon that she's tied to, and you would know this, and I don't think Nora knows, she's actually touched by the Keeper uh, Torg. Or Targ, sorry, Targ. Which is the same marking that Nora has. Um, I know Nora was, Nora knew she was trying to get Targ's favor. I don't she, think she oh, knew it went that far. She has it. She just wanted to be, because the way Keepers work in the world, she wanted more power, and by taking the mark from Nora and giving it to herself would mean that she would be closer to Targ. Flame right. Lord. Uh, keepers are dead gods in this world, and they are the keeper of a portfolio. If you're used to second edition, third, you know, and on, they are usually a portfolio of something. This one, Flameborn, is the Keeper of Fire. Uh, specifically, a lot of um, sun-based things. And they are what nourishes plants and everything else. They also believe in, like, you know, burning down a part of a forest to bring it back healthier. When Dovon comes out, uh, she says, I, I will be warned he is warm. I should probably roll the carpet back, and maybe we should put uh, wet the floor, because I don't want him to damage anything of you. Has this I can been... suppress it, but I have to be inside of uh, Dovon to do that then. Um, yeah, no, she would just, uh, Marson just kind of shrug and like get up and like start moving, like rolling up the carpet herself. Like, so as you're doing that, uh, Olivier would help you. Obviously, she like picks up the chaise with like by herself and you roll it out from underneath. When she does that, she side glances to the right and sees a piano that never used to be in here. And she goes, why is there a piano in here? Um, I actually had that brought in from Gizhelm. Uh-huh. And she wanders over towards the piano. Which is so sad because Martin probably did have a piano in Gizhelm and had it shipped here. <laughs> mm -hmm. She wanders over the piano and goes to the screen. Let me, uh, I guess, switch us to uh, everybody. Oh, also, I got a 30 on my psychology lore. Hey, Everston. <laughs> Let's talk Hi. about why she is going to be nervous. Uh, <laughs> when she slides the screen and she looks, she sees the piano, turns, and sees Everston. Everston, do you do anything when she sees you immediately? Like, she goes... Uh huh. Yeah, you, you didn't have this piano, and she turns back and looks and sees Everston. Do you like do anything? Do you like hit a key or anything like that? I don't know what type of person Everston is now. He's become <laughs> a little more um, humane or human-like than he used to be, as he's kind of finding himself. Yeah, probably a little like a ding 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 ding. ding just two keys. <laughs> uh, she backs up. Uh, the eyes go red. She backs up far and she like shifts from here steps into shadow and Everston it's hard to see her she blurs to the other side of the chase lounge mm. she did not do this stuff when you originally met her or but she didn't even get a chance she got hit with a piano and she got a into chance to do it no <laughs> she wasn't a vampire then it's true so she backs up and she goes Sophia what is that why is the Atomus here who Damn near killed me. Um, due to the troubles that uh, Merrifield is having, and one of the reasons why we are making our way to Kadra, um, due to the dangers presented, it was suggested to me uh, by Inspector by Tenwick. Who, him? By him? Tenwick? She just said... I'm going to die again, aren't I? That's why I'm not going to prison. You're just going to kill you are me. Not, you are not going to die here. I don't know if I should bring Dovan out. If he's here. They are here. 
whatever. Uh, because if it goes south, I mean, I control uh, Dovan, but um, I will say, as you know, the personality switches a little bit when he's out. Uh, and if I'm wearing uh, my uh, uh, my idol on, there is definitely a binding of our mental states. So I can, I can bring him. I should probably have him separate from me. <clears throat> and I should probably put him down maybe on the metal stairs here and keep him away from everything. Um, I mean, that's why we're backing up as many flammables as we can. It's, if you would feel more comfortable summoning him here at the metal staircase, that's I, fine. I just, but I just don't want him to jump out and, and, and cause any conflict. And I know, I know there's a chance that, that they will try to do that. Um... Yes, please don't. Don't start now, won't be none. (laughs) Wow! (laughs) If ever since said that, I'd be dying. Um, (laughs) It's um, all right. Um, I will, I will, I will bring him into existence then. Um, And 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 uh, she looks to Everston and goes, "I don't know your name. We uh, didn't get a chance to talk. The only time we met." Mind telling me what it is so I can tell my better half to not attack you? You can call me Everston. Excellent. So she turns and she crouches down and she traces her finger on the ground and she makes the circle, a line on the bottom and a line through it. The same symbol that you would see for Targ. The same one that Nora has on her. It's a very crude version. Um, Vines grow out of it. They spread across the ground and they burst into flames. And as the ash hits, uh, you can see it kind of stick to the flame of this shambling humanoid creature. Um, And it is all burnt up and there's smoldering coming off of it. And it never used to look like this. Uh, She says something in... uh, does, does, Does the doc have a lot of languages? She doesn't, I don't think she has the language that they'd be speaking, but Martin has Kedraic, High Kedraic, Dread, Hollow, Thalsthon, and Sylvan. So it's in Sylvan, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, she in Sylvan uh, says, it's okay. They are not going to harm us. And you see it like puff up and you see the fire start to like grow in the chest cavity and fill the mouth. And she puts her hand over his mouth, or its mouth, and says, stop. Um, I'm going to roll a check here. It calms down. The fire dims. There's just smoldering off it. The eyes are, like, glowing like uh, coals in a fire. She says, we should be fine. And she moves back and sits on the lounge. But she doesn't lay down. She sits upright. Everston, do you leave from behind the curtains to make your way out? Or are you going to stay there? Are you going to grab a big yeah, chair I'll, from the back and bring it out, or are you just going to stand? I'll stand. Um, we'll move the curtain so that I'm, I guess, back here. Want to be over here, maybe, or just problem solved? Off there we the go. Side, one of these. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's fine. Okay. Uh, the, just leaning on the table, yeah, maybe. Sure. We'll move. But uh, uh, Everson's pretty impressed with the Eidolon because he he hasn't actually seen it before. All oh, he all right. he did was. Yeah, All he did was no. smack a smack an uh, uh, an upstart banter with a piano. So oh, maybe, oh God. maybe he would I have uh, been a little more, I don't know, cautious if he saw the idol on before. But <sighs> she says he's um, kind of looking it up and down. Says, um, "Is he going to be here for this for a, a reason? Uh, are you afraid of me or something?" Uh, no, and there's no <laughs> need for a sense motive or anything no. like that. Marson <laughs> says when. Marson believes, at least herself, she says no. Um, But as part of the conditions that were put on, like, I don't think Nora would have been like, oh, yeah, for sure. Just totally talk to her by herself after she's been gone for like forever and told me about this weird shit that's following her. Like, that's that's it. That's why. That's why ever since here, because Nora said he needs to be there for your protection and how it's is because of the spirit that's following her. Yeah. So uh, I guess we get into it. What, uh, what do you want to talk to her about to start this off? I think that's actually what Martin says. Um, one of the reasons he's here is for 
my protection, although, as I said, I believe that I'm safe with you. Uh, however, she did mention that you have a spiritual problem that is external, and Mr. Everston may be able to help with that in case that dis- in case that um, oh. person decides to oh. crash our session. Yeah, I have been hiding out in salted rooms. Uh, I purchased um, from from the the train cars some of the old world salt that you have and I've salted the room I've been staying in I carry some on me as well um, just in case it was pricey but um, um, as Tenwick said that it was the best thing to protect against the spirit when the city goes away which I don't quite understand how this works yet and, and as she's saying that you start seeing the buildings dissolve into like there's like a pool of water that spreads across the city and the buildings literally sink into it and they disappear as it is filling into the lantern. My question to uh, Everston would be, you don't always have the lantern on you. You can like leave it in the center of the town. Someone else can do that. They can call the city in out of the other grave lighters. Um, would you be having one of the grave lighters bring it to you or does one of like does Nora or Voss have it right now? Just can't put any spirits uh, either, in it because it's too full. It's full. Uh, I'd say either one of them would have it now. Um, okay. Yeah, just just the other grave lighters. They're they're the only ones that I I trust with it. Yeah, obvi- obviously you're not gonna be like, hey, excuse me, uh, could you glass? Could you pick this up and carry it? Yes, pick this yeah. up for me, Don't please. It's super <laughs> fucking heavy. Homer's she's like, she's like, Homer's <laughs> last out of the city. Pick up the lantern on your way out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, okay, so I'll assume one of them have it. And she looks out and sees the city vanish and goes, I have so many questions. So do I, actually. But that's <laughs> not what we're here to discuss today. Okay. Uh, and she would pull down some of the shutters uh, so no one could see her Eidolon. Uh, she'd get up and walk through and walk back. And she'd be like, oh, yeah, this spirit. Um, I, I tried talking to it. It immediately attacked us. Uh, Dovan held it down uh, while I fled. Uh, every time it would um, uh, unfortunately attack Dovan and, and put him into to uh, 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 back in his domain, his pocket domain, uh, I would be at least a mile away. And then I would have to find somewhere to rest and do it again. The spirit has been hunting me all the way from the train wreck to here. I, I don't know why it wants me so bad, though. I didn't take anything. Um, do you know? And and she kind of like side glances Everson, or does that know? Um, so when she says, I don't know why it's chasing me down, uh, Martin would like to, I would like to roll perception to see if yeah, she's absolutely. lying. Um, because that does seem really odd. Like, why would this thing from this train wreck chase mm-hmm. you down specifically? 15. Uh, Everson, actually. I'm not you, sure. Oh, go ahead. Oh. 34 I'm for my sh- perception. And then, sorry. Okay. I'm not sure what it is, but. I'm here to make sure that if it does show up, the two of you are safe. Can you give me, do you have grave letter lore now? What do I? All right. Give me a grave lighter check. Let's check. Oh, it's 32. So when you saw them, spoke with them before, remember they didn't really want to harm any of you until you grabbed the uh, captor, the captive that they had, which was, as you found out, the true heir to Wolflock. Uh, That's the only time they really attacked you. They tried to get near the light to prod and do things, but they didn't all out chase you until you fled with him. After that happened, there were still some survivors somewhere else, and uh, you know you saw a bunch of these... Uh, you're guessing a form of holy revenants, like guardian revenants. But if it's tra- tracing and tracking her down, it's probably because she's not good. Like if it is a spirit from the true faith made to protect the true faith, she either stole something, harmed somebody, or they sensed her as being an evil threat, like an outlo- uh, an otherworldly threat because she's a summoner. 
because that's fucking illegal. Yeah, I was going to say she's a summoner who's marked. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and marked and pretty open about it for the most part. And she's a fucking demon. Well, she's she's fiend blooded, at least. So the reason would be uh, you're a devil. <laughs> you're evil. You're a devil. And and you're there are, three strikes. <laughs> there are several factors I could think of as to why it would be after you. But the most prominent would be just what you are. Oh, the vampire part? I, it wasn't a vampire then. I yeah. Don't think. No, just your connection to other worldly oh. creatures. Oh, she taps the horn. She's like the family. Um, listen, I didn't choose that. I don't think that's what he's talking about. As I kind of like gesture to. Dovan, and then the marking mm -hmm. that she has. Oh, uh, I did choose that. Um, uh, listen, um, I, I originally was studying to be a druid for the Circle of Ash, uh, originally. Um, and I was in the forest, uh, southwest of here. Unfortunately, through everything, it, it did not go the way I wanted. It, and we may have not seen eye to eye. Uh, when Dovan emerged the first time, um, let's just say the circle didn't make it. And I was assisted by some other um, thing. Uh, I didn't know what it was. I followed the burning trail, and that burning trail led me to a, I believe descendant or, or or I don't know how it works but um tar one of targ's followers and they helped uh get me through some of the issues I can say that I feel very detached from targ now since um, the change the recent change but but um, dovan is still attached in in, in in is touched by by targ uh flameborn I am no longer, and I think this is the dilemma that I'm in right now. I tried accessing it, and it took me quite a few days to heal from the fire and the sun, because, again, yeah. So, sorry, Doc. I, I am... Yes, the spirit is dangerous. I don't understand it. If I had my personal choice, I would destroy it. Uh, I tried going toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. It did not go well. So if your big friend here has a way to destroy it, why don't we just uh, get rid of the salt in the room and call it in? Let's get this over with. Right? Best therapy. For not to have a conflict on the train at all. Hmm. Considering the current state of Merrifield, I think having another blowout drag down fight would do more harm than good. Yeah. Uh, well, I can tell you that I traveled for a week with no real good sleep fleeing from this this apparition, this whatever you're calling it, the revenant. Uh, it didn't go well. The fleeing was hard. And uh, when I made it here um, and met you and everything else, uh, and I thought, I mean, I was, I was willing to get put in jail, uh, and, and, and put on trial to be away from that. Like, I thought the piano was bad and she like glances to it. She's like, but this thing is way scarier than that. I'm not prepared. I was blindsided by the piano and looks to Everston, but I was not prepared for this, this spirit. Um. Uh, what do you what what do we what else do we need to talk about today here doc um well um i'd wanted to touch on these uh questions more to rebaseline see how you've been doing um since we unfortunately parted ways uh although it i happened. think this may help shed some insight as to perhaps why that uh holy Revenant is following you. Um, 
Well, how do we stop it was all, that? How do we stop? The Revenant, the thing chasing me. How do we stop that? What do we do? I heard the trains uh, leaving. I heard that. I, I'm assuming I'm going to be on it. Um, yes. I'm staying upstairs in the, the guest room, but how do we get rid of that so it doesn't just keep chasing us? Is like, is there, is it like my, uh, is it like Dovon? Can it only be so far from its place? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. I haven't had mm -hmm. a chance to look into this, and um, I dabble in many things, uh, but my main focus is the mental and emotional health of the community I live in. So that's what I've been focusing on. Yeah. Uh, Everston, can you give me a perception? Because you're obviously watching everything and, uh, you know, checking windows and doing things like that. Like, being being Everston. Natural one. Okay. Do you want to use a hero point? <laughs> yeah, would you like to use a hero point? <laughs> Do you have so many... Todd. Yeah, Todd, might as well. I mean, I am here. I am here to keep a lookout, right? So yes, yes. let's hero point this thing. All right. <laughs> slightly, slightly better. A five on the die for a twenty-three. Twenty-three. It's, it's okay. Better than a one. So looking around, you don't <laughs> mm -hmm. notice the thing out of sort in front of you. When you turn back around to like grab maybe like a, a, a something on the table or move or shift, out of the corner of your eye. There is a, a small, like, ghostial shimmer uh, in the back right-hand corner. And I'm going to move the map a little bit so everyone who's watching this can see. Back by where she has her night, like that nightstand with a purple glow, there is something that passes in front of that mirror briefly. Um, an apparition or something along those lines. Uh, the doctor doesn't notice it. It doesn't seem like Olivier or Dovon notice it because it's back behind something. Is there anything you want to do about it, or are you just keeping an eye on it? No, I will. I'll be on alert now, but I will, I will definitely keep an eye out for it. Okay. I will right. hope that maybe I had worked out ahead of time with the doctor, like, signals for trouble. Like, Would you too? That would be my question. That's up to you. Because I'm here um, for her protection as well as uh, Howitz's protection, right? right. So... I think we I'm would kind have of protecting one from the other. And I'm also just here because, you know, <laughs> she, you, you don't you don't go at each other's throats when the principles stay right. there. Right. 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 Not that I feel like I have an authority over either of these women. But, you know, um, I think we would have worked something out just so that in case we were like deep in the middle of a session or whatever, like Mardson didn't freak out if you started. Like, Did you tell him to play like a key like on the out. piano? Like tap a key and play a, a, no, a specific note on the piano? Maybe or like an you, SOS. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or would you have them just move the chair a certain way? Like what non-distinct, nuanced signal? Because I'm assuming you wouldn't want him to say something. You want him to be nuanced. No, I think... Emerson has been working with a trained soldier That's during true. the downtime since from the last session to now. That is true. From our live episode to now. So... Maybe he's starting to work on hand signals as well. Oh, there you go. Uh, then Maybe I guess there might have there might have been a, a hand signal or something. Would you have um, it in view of Olivier or no? Would it be behind the screen above the piano and him doing it? Or would you let her see it? I think we would have hashed out ahead of time. Like if it was something that Olivier was being threatening, I would ask for Everson to hide it. If it was something okay. that was threatening the both of us, like Olivier wasn't the threat, it was something else that he would be a little bit more open so that she could see it as well and not think we were trying to totally fair. screw her over. Totally fair. So then you give a hand signal. Uh, Olivier sees it, doesn't do anything. Dovon moves forward uh, when that happens up in front. And you see the vines like wrap around her legs. She's like, what are you doing? And in Sylvan, he goes, Creature is here. And you see the vines start growing over. She's like, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not fusing right. No. And they like stop and like the burning around her stops. She's like, no, it hurts me when we do this right now. We can't, can't. Um, I do thank Dovan for his vigilance. Uh, it, it slowly turns and looks to you and realizes you, do you speak in Sylvan to it? Yes. Uh, in Sylvan back, it would say spirit. 
Uh, Martson has a very fancy. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Is it a bandolier well, of ghost touch? Because no. I already know no. this everything. No. Fancy no. everything. She does not have that. She has a very fancy um, sword cane. Mm. And. Uh, Normally, it it just it's I'm I'm sorry it's that. Well, now we all know it's a sword cane, but it looks like a regular cane, um, okay. inlaid with gold and silver, um, okay. and it looks normal. And then she kind of taps it and spends an action to interact with it, and, like twists the handle. Okay. And then it becomes noticeable that it's actually a sword cane. Uh, Olivia goes, "Oh, I didn't know you it's, had that." It's called an in, it's called an infiltrator's accessory. It's super dope. Um, is this an actual thing? You did not make this up. No. So passive I love observers your Pathfinder 2E. Pa- yeah, passive <laughs> observers can't attempt a check to do, notice the cane is anything more than a mundane, if superb, fashion accessory. Those carefully examining it need to be a di- difficulty thirty perception. Holy um, and shit. then well, while the blade is merged, it can't be drawn and it gains the benefits of a third level magic aura spell to appear non-magical. <laughs> wow. Sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> so that Martin is, just has this Martin just has amazing, this cane. Actually. This cane, and then she just kind of taps it, twists it, and then it's like, oh, maybe it's actually a a weapon of some sort. <laughs> so uh Olivier says, if uh if this is the case, um I I can cast something so that I can merge with him for a short time frame. Um, would you prefer me to do that, or do we want to? Are you going to speak to this thing? Like I I I am not. I have reliquaries of family and friends, um, but I don't deal with normal. That's just we hired True Faith for that, or uh, well, fakely hired True Faith people uh, at the Howitz residence. Um. Uh, I think when the Eidolon moved, Everson would have used that as an excuse to take on a more of a combat-ready stance to, okay. to be prepared. Maybe even moving, uh, doing as much as moving the shield into position from his shoulder using the shield rail, just kind of standing like, hang on now. What, what is the shield rail? Because I don't think we've, we've only explained it maybe once or twice on the show. Shield rail is a device that is can be installed on an atomist that pretty much stores your shield on your back or on your shoulder, and then has it uh, when you activate it, it moves that shield down your arm into position on your hand, so you ready the shield basically without yeah. using an action. Yeah, it's a, like it's once a around, reaction, right? Isn't that what it is? Or is it's it a, a free action? It's a free action, I think. Um, I think it's free. I think it's free yeah, action. and it moves it into place. Or moves it back so it's on your shoulder. You can do it once around. Uh, your, did you get a magical shield yet? I think you did, right? I have a magical shield from character creation. It was my one oh, special item. That's right. That's right. That's right. So as you pull this into position, uh, the spirit manifests again, but it doesn't manifest in the back this time. It manifests behind the table here. Uh, and it manifests for a second and it has its hands on the table. Uh, its head is facing down. Uh, And it looks up and the eyes flash like this bright, bright blue into the room. I need everyone to give me a will save. Uh, If you had seen the spirit previously, uh, you have no penalty. If you had not seen the spirit previously, you have a minus four to this check. So I have not seen it, right? Or have I? No, you you did. You saw it go by. I think you're the only one. I think so far. You're right. You're right. You're right. And Dovan. That's the other one who saw it. I'll take that natural 20. Holy shit. (laughs) Really? I got a pretty average roll 28. I love you. Dispel dice. You're so good. (laughs) That's the new ones, the new dispels. I'm using I'm using my uh, my forge dice, my my Norse Norse foundry dice right now. I got my rainbow ones. I've got some Everson dice on the way. I can't wait to share them. So as the spirit moves uh, and gets in the place, it puts its hands down and you see him vibrating and the eyes flash. So you made it. Todd, what did you say you got for Everston? 28. Okay, you made it. Uh, uh, Olivia uh, looks at it and her eyes lock with it. And she blinks for a minute. She goes, are you trying to enchant me? Not smart. Being that she's a vampire right now, mind affecting? Not that great. 
on her. Dovon failed the save. Oh, mm. boy. So he turns uh, and looks at it uh, and locks in position. He loses all of his actions this round. It begins to speak uh, and it speaks in hollow. I'm assuming the doctor speaks hollow. I already know Everston does. Yes. Olivier while, is asking while, what it's saying because she actually doesn't speak hollow. While while it's while it's talking, I'm going to spend three actions pursuing okay. a lead there. OK, well, three actions. Yes. Examining pursuing it. a lead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like you are pursuing a way to lead my weapon into its throat. OK, to lead my way out. of She here. she is an investigator. <laughs> All right. Well, give me your roll. What <laughs> do you got? Her. Oh, no, it's just three actions. Just I'm just mean mugging it as it's okay. pontificating. <laughs> so is it manifest in saying stuff in Hallow? Um, as it continues saying it, I'll put this thing on screen for us. It is that spirit okay. standing here and has his hands on it. Uh, and it's wiping his hands across the table that you have, like the banquet table, like through the food and everything. And it looks like it might be trying to write something. And it is chanting. I'm going to ask those who made their will saves. And uh, uh, we're going to do an initiative just for actions. This may or may not be combat, depending on how you handle this. As it comes and manifests, um, I would say perception would probably make the most sense for Everston, right? Because he was watching for it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, what do you think Doctor would be using for initiative during this? Uh, perception, because she's spending the, like, the three okay. actions to observe. Uh, Olivier is going to go with... Um, acrobatics, actually, um, to move out of the way. And Dovon is going with perception as well. Uh, I will put our, our lovely chart up here. I will add you all to this. Let me clear this out. Move all turn counters. Clear. And I'm just going to click you all and add you in, and then you can type your own initiatives in. Uh, and a turn. Boom. There you go. Marson's like, um, I have so many other things to discuss. It does not need to be you. Right? Why are you here? <laughs> right. Excuse me, sir. Sir. Sir, you're interrupting sir, sir. a private session. You do not I pay can to pencil be here. You in. I can pencil you in for next week, sir. Oh my god. Get out of here. <laughs> um, Someone's trying to uh do better in their life and get out of the position they were in. You better back the fuck off. So I Also, this is actually, actually a HIPAA violation, so I need you to leave immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so so is me yeah. being here, really, but you yeah. know. Yeah. No, well, no, we, would, no, no. we would have signed a waiver It's a for dual you. therapy session. Oh, waiver. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> dual therapy, yeah. Ever since uh, they're like, I'm here to guard, and like, turns out like he's he's getting... He's here to he's cry. Drunk too. <laughs> I got that's a right. 10, unfortunately, for Dovon. Aim to guard, um, left to cry. Stay oh, to whoops, cry. Oh, Dovon. And then for her, uh, they go at the same... Th oh, actually, no, Dovon doesn't roll. I would roll for her, that's right. Uh, so that was a 24. And then we are going to... Wow, your initiative is fast. I rolled an 11 for initiative with perception. I have a plus 20. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> so Because uh, patients, get, patients get crazy and wild. She's got to be able to defend this herself. True. This is true. I have it off screen, but it is here for, for us uh, for initiative. Uh, Martin, we are not in combat. Uh, this would be a... Um, this will be a influential kind of thing where you can get points a victory condition if you want to influence it or if you want to exercise it if you want to try to fetter it those are all options That's all options her jam but um, we don't have the lantern here so right but but everston is able to grapple and touch creatures so we'll see how this turns out so we're starting with you um you get three actions what would you like to do is it manifesting as chanting right now let me look over and Everston, you're next up. Sheet. Need to figure like, out. I don't know if you want to do is. an occult roll to figure out what this thing is. Well, that will be that as well. But um, because Martin took a different path than Nora, she's got a few different abilities sure. from the yeah, inspector right. tree. Yeah, no, yeah, right. In inspector, yeah. So, or the investigator, attempt to recall knowledge as part of that action. Okay. What you got for me? Uh, I I love this new. We'll just roll a call. 
for those who don't know, we made uh, Dr. Martin's uh, lovely trailer or trailer train car right before the show today. <laughs> wow, I got another national 20. Not lying. These Todd, I'm are so crazy. glad we're not using the crit rules yet, because apparently I, uh, uh, <laughs> what you got yikes. for me? Natural yikes. 20. What do you what do you want? 20. That'd be a 20. Or I'm sorry. That'd be a 36 occult occult. So here's you know, it is a phantom knight. Uh, it is a much more powerful version of a normal one. They're very passionate souls. Normally, a phantom knight is trying to find its way home. You know that this phantom this version of it is not trying to find its way home and is trying to take the soul of someone to bring it back to home. So they're more of a, uh, a hunter going out to find evil and bring it back to the true faith. So they roam the the ethereal in the material world because there's no purgatory. They roam it and they bring things back to the true faith. Okay. You know that a phantom can hold someone else's soul inside of itself and take it home in the ethereal. They don't fetter it. They basically just bind it and take it home and then it is either destroyed or given to someone else. That's the first thing you know. On a natural 20, uh, they are susceptible to being killed because they aren't they aren't really alive and they're not really dead. They're in this weird, uniquely spot in between. You know that originally these kind of phantoms were created in purgatory and sent out into the real world. So they would die and go to purgatory. Well, now there's no purgatory, so they have nowhere to go. Just like normal okay. spirits. But they are built in purgatory and sent out. They're never a person. They are made from the essence of other people. They're kind of crafted or soul warped into these things. And then the other thing that is very, uh, I'd say, prominent to know, they can kill with a look. Okay. You're guessing they are try were trying to do that when they showed up, but the first version is paralysis. If you fail that check, they get a second roll on you on the next turn. If you fail that one, you go to zero. Okay. Nasty stuff. Yeah. So, it did the look. It got Dovon. It didn't get anybody else. Well, that was your first action, right? Or is that three actions for you? No, that's my first action. You got two more. What do you want to do? Um. Crying is an option. That would be two. That's... Not, not doctors, style, yeah, yeah, no. but okay. <laughs> Weep gently as a. Minor. Weep gently as a as a as a free. And cry free for action. your soul. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Um. Man, I'm supposed to try and. You can speak to it. I mean, you it, you definitely can converse with these creatures. They're if not. This is, they're not evil. If this is based, if this is like a victory based, uh, victory conditions, mm -hmm. can I mm -hmm. roll? Can I roll psychological lore to see like the best way to break through to this thing and make and not have it go after her? Yeah. Like Give trying me, to figure uh, out like what's yeah, yeah, making yeah. it click. Like why yeah. after all the all the stuff that's going on, why are you coming after her? Yeah. When there's so much other crazy stuff happening right now. Give your roll. That is a very fair assessment. Um, that's a 30. Uh so if it is here and it is hunting her, that means that it has either made contact with her before and this is its target it's it's basically it's um mark to bring back or she took something okay when i had asked her if she had taken anything i got a 34 percent like why is it coming after she said i don't know i got a 34 perception to see if she was would lying you like, would you like to make another roll well i was wondering if 34 had gotten anything before no she didn't seem to be lying okay that doesn't mean she isn't um, let's see. She's gonna may have. I mean, this is in the moment with it around. You've not seen her in the moment with it around. Four. Before, so I'll give you another roll. No penalty if you'd like to make one. Um, they take something. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, it's actually a pretty I'm gonna good do idea. that. I'm right. gonna do that. Use your last action like... to make another perception check on her. Smart move. I, I, I think it's a good idea. That is a 35. 
So even if you would have made a 28 this time, you would have made it. She is, uh, she has her hand in her pocket and she's clutching something. Okay. I think as my free action, I kind of look at her and I'm like, I think I know why it's following you as I like glance to her pocket. <laughs> so, sh- so she goes, oh, well, does she even catch that? Uh, nope. Uh, she goes, why? Like totally trying to keep the, the ruse up. Everston, uh, what is your passive perception out of curiosity? 28. Uh, you would see the same thing. She looked at her, looked at her pocket. You notice she's clutching something in her pocket as well. Um, and the spirit is continuing its stuff in hollow. Um, you know that on its turn, it's going to try to kill her, not knowing that it didn't take effect for the paralysis. What would you like to do? Get three actions. Talking to it, grabbing it. I mean, you're strong enough that I'm pretty sure if you got a hold of it, you could even drag it out of out of the train car all the way to Voss and say, deal with it. I haven't had a chance Just to share my stuff yet, so we'll we'll get to that potentially. Right. Running right. along the top of the train till I get to the right <laughs> car. Oh, Naruto, Naruto running. <laughs> No, yeah. he's out. He'd be in the center of the city. You would just have to walk out the door and go like a hundred foot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, even better. Because you guys, the train is uh, turned around. You guys are getting ready to leave, heading towards Kadra. So it's right yeah. next to <laughs> where you need to be. For all I know, it's just standing there, mean mugging. So what I'd like to do is move. I I, sh- I wouldn't say that. You're smart enough to know about spirits now. Like this is your job. You oh, know, it is. Ha- it has harmful intentions right now. Then I'm going to move to here, and then okay. I will raise my shield. Okay. And I'm going to roll an occultism check to see if I know anything uh, about this thing. Uh, give me a roll. Yeah, because I didn't have a chance to share my information yet. Nope. 30. Uh, the number one thing you know is they're susceptible to death. If you get it, grab it, and kill it, it dies. Dies, dies. Aren't we all? Aren't we all susceptible? Uh, nope. Normally, your spirit, when you destroy it, it will disappear and it will usually remanifest until you find out why the spirit is roaming in its area because they are task oriented when they die they're done and they are made originally in purgatory so these things are actually very rare and there was what 12 of them on site something like that oh man I, i just i just had such a good idea but nora can't do it i know so that was your first check what would you like to do with your other two Actions. Oh no, you moved. I don't. That's one. Did your occult? Now you have one left, right? Oh, I I raised the shield, so I'm. Now you're I'm done. done. Are you saying something then? I'm not sure what all it's capable of, but I know that if we destroy it, it is done. I uh, would make eye contact with you immediately when you say that. And do your hands glow or anything since you can touch stuff? Like, do you have the furnace on so you can physically grab it if it's needed? Yeah, how does that work? Because that's, that's part of my uh, heritage from my ancestry. I just want to know just, what it looks like, and do you have it on right ghost now? Ghost touch. Uh, and just for the coolness factor, probably have a little little flare up of the green flame. Getting all the joints and stuff. It's mm-hmm. this big metal hand with the green kind of flames licking over it. Uh, it looks to you, looks back to the doctor, looks to Olivier, and then to Dovon. Uh, Dovon is afterwards, uh, I'm going to shake it off. Uh, I shake it off and Dovon in Sylvan says, today it dies and starts to step forward. Uh, oh boy. unless someone's going to say something to Olivier to make him stop is a free action. It's going to move to here. And the spirit looks up and goes in, in, in hollow again. I've killed you four times. And you see it draw a sword out of its mouth. Like a spiritual sword. And then it manifests into a physical object. Hmm. I move over. Uh, I am going to try to grapple it. I swing and miss. Crushing your table. Uh, and then it ignites its hand on fire for its third action. Uh, Olivier moves behind you, shifts, disappears, and reappears back here. Uh, way out of the way of everything. <laughs> and she pours out salt and she fans it in front of her and behind her, putting herself in a salt circle. 
Um, that is my actions. And then that would take us to the doctor again. Hard to protect people when they move out of my reach. Well, she put herself in a salt circle, hoping that it doesn't make it in. Um, That's pretty good. I feel like it's pretty obvious if we return the thing that she took, mm-hmm. it'll hopefully leave. So good, good chance. Uh, I guess in Sylvan, mm-hmm. my first action will be to turn to Liviane and say in mm-hmm. Sylvan, if you return the trinket in your pocket, it will probably stop chasing you. Ooh. <laughs> just like flat out, just like listen. Give, are you intimidation <laughs> or diplomacy? How how are you handling this with her? Um, because unless anything's like really like I think Martin uses intimidation when patients are acting up and getting violent. So for this, she would use diplomacy. Of course, I mean, I would give me give me a roll. B versus her wheel DC, I believe, right? Yeah, I only got 25. Would you like to use your hero point? You got three of them. Yes. All right. And she's using the NPC or hero points, if anyone's wondering how the NPC has it. So, because we have X amount in a pool from all the ones left over from the first season. <laughs> uh, That was not much better. There's a 26. 26? I got one better. She looks at you and she goes... The trinket's my family's. It doesn't belong to him. It's hard to keep it in the family if you get killed over it. Well, then let's kill it. You told me it could get killed now. There's more of us. I, I, what is your passive perception as the doctor? Uh, as the doctor for anything relating to her, it's going to be a nine plus it's going to be a 29. So, you know, on intelligence and, and just wit, uh, Olivier rivals you pretty well. Uh, right. And how it's, it, it does, it does it to Tenwick as well. Very similar level of intelligence. While she is definitely here to become better, she's also here because she knows it's safer. Yeah. And she can't kill it on its own or on her own. She's tried. So you know what works better than one person and an Eidolon? Two people and an Eidolon. You know what's better than two? Everston and Eidolon and two people. So this is definitely her making a play to a point. Not really trying to harm you, but definitely using you to get rid of this problem. Up to you if that's the way you would like to do it. And she would put her hand on the table and you hear something metal funk on the table that she pulls out of her pocket. And the creature, the spirit looks up and the knight looks at her with a sword drawn. Um, I'm going to then, because I'm still trying to murder people, do this no trying to be helpful um no no, <laughs> yeah, no. uh Martin is going to turn to this creature this mm-hmm. phantom knight and mm-hmm. in hollow say can you fault her for trying to take care of her family mm-hmm. what are you using for this using a roll are you searching yeah, I think so. for the right? So remember, when you do the social yeah, I'm searching. Encounters. I'm searching for the right thing to say. So, so you, that's uh, when I was asking, like, could I use psychology lore to figure out, like, what's the best way to try and yeah, get that. this thing to yeah. back off? Yeah. So that's like her probing question. Like, you know that because you, you know what the this? trinket is and, and that it is bound to whatever it is and hunting her down, um, that speaking about religion or talking about religion is probably the best thing to do because it is a true faith built phantom. Okay. Even if um, it's not true faith, they definitely have control over it if they didn't build it. Because true faith right. is not that, I mean, it's not even maybe, maybe 50 years old, roughly. Right. Um, so you can use religion check if you'd like to. We can see how many how many successes you get and how many failures you get. Yeah, I think I'll do... I'll do the... Uh, Religion check, and okay. I think how Martin's going to say is, 
Why are you trying to deny her the right to her family reliquary? Isn't that what the faith espouses? Your true faith? Give me your will. <laughs> I'm saying that in hollow. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, that means Everston understands you too. Uh, The only person in the room that doesn't is Olivia and her Eidolon. They don't understand hollow. So you guys, Everston knows what you're saying. That's a 29. 29. Uh, It looks up, sword drawn, kind of pulled in front of its face. It turns it sideways, so it's just the blade. Uh, Dovin is, is getting ready to kind of grapple this creature after busting your desk or your, your banquet table. Uh, right. And it says uh, back in Hallow with a very elven tone to it. This is, it is her family's, but her family is ours. That trinket belongs to the true faith. It's too dangerous. Please retrieve it and I will leave. So you got a, what'd you say your total was? A 20 what? 29. 29, it does not a crit. You're close, but it does give you one success. Okay. Would you like to do anything else? You can spend one more action if you'd like. And I'm only using combat turns for this because it is can quickly turn into combat. If yeah, it could definitely turn into one. Um, Got the fighter here. You're good. I guess I'm going <laughs> to... We'd be I don't better know, with boss. We'd be better at. I don't know what role this would fall under, but I guess I'm going to try and probe. Like, what do you mean her her family is yours? Uh, I don't oh, understand. Um, I would say you could use society. The DC will be a little higher than the the religion one was. Um, or you could try to use some form of persuasion to get them to tell you. That would also be a little higher than religion. Religion is the lowest check because it, it is true to that that skill. Um, can't really try religion again, though, until something changes. Right. I think without penalty, at least. Yeah, I can't really use that because I'm not lying. I'm actually trying mm-hmm. to figure out what it is. So I'm going to use society. Like, I don't, I don't I don't understand. You're trying like, to figure out how follow, this all pieces together. Right. If they follow if she follows a keeper and her family follows keepers, why are they saying that they belong to the true faith? Yep. So yep. that's that's what Martin's like. Well, I don't understand how does her family, how is her family yours? How how do they belong to you? If you get this, this is going to be a very big moment in Afrontia okay. history. Well, that was a 19 on the die, so that is a 35. So that is a crit, because you need a 25. You get two. <laughs> it looks up, it looks to Everston, it looks to the doctor, and then glares, like, through you at her. She's, like, crouched down, ready to leave if she needs to. It says, because the portfolios of a keeper are the portfolios of the true faith. That belongs to us. Give me a portfolio and I will leave. And she goes, what is it saying? <laughs> she has no fucking clue. <laughs> That would be all your actions, right? Um, it's all three. One, two. Yes. Okay, so that takes us to Everston. Everston, this thing is ready to charge on its turn, at least at Dovon, to get him out of the way. What would uh, what would you what would you do? You could also speak to it. Raise, you are a grave lighter. I'll raise my shield again just to maintain the protection where I'm at. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then, boy, my interpersonal skills are not great. No, you can intimidate. You could use religion as well. Uh, You could use grave lighter lore if you want to try to tie something to um, learn about it. And and, because right now you guys are at three successful checks against this. The grave lighter lore will be a slightly higher one because it's not religion based. But you could try making one. You really only so that's need my... a point or two left to, to push so, the diplomatic part. The thing that... Good letter is, lore is my best chance. The oh, thing, well, uh, man, I feel so bad, like, interrupting people, but just to help remind Todd, hmm. you and Olivier are related. So if well, this... 
Well, either by marriage or something, but you guys, you, your families are related. So if this creature For a is brief saying, history, the way it is related history, is yes. because her father married Loretta at one point in time. They were married way back, which means her father's really old. Not as old as Loretta, but they were together at some point in time. But the, the angle I'm going with this, and this is to try and help spark some ideas, is that if this thing is saying that she has a portfolio and it belongs to her, like, does that mean he's going to come after you and the grave lighters? Nope. Like, no, you wouldn't. That wouldn't oh, even, you would know would that's know? nothing okay. to do with it. Yeah. She right. just wants that item. Okay. Specifically. Okay. Grave lighters are not tied to religion at all. Okay. So what do you want to do, Everston? You ready your shield as an action. You got two left. You want to use a grave lighters lore check to try to talk to it? Yeah, I'll do a grave lighter's lore, grave lighter lore check just to see uh, what's what with this guy. All right, give me a get a little more info out of it. Girl, you need a twenty-five up. Mm-hmm. Since we already know the DC, oh, I'll leave uh, that open. You know what? I'll spend a hero point. That's, All right, that's two ridiculously for the low. Okay. Much better. That's a uh, twenty thirty-three. Not a crit, but it's enough to push it into the four category. Uh, it takes the sword and turns it over um, and has it facing down in a non-offensive one, but but like in between him, it, and Dovan, it says, call off the creature and I will speak instead of attacking her. Uh, Olivia goes, what is it saying? Uh, I think as my... Final action. Mm-hmm. I'd like to make a diplomacy check. Sure. To who? Towards who? So I know what DC I'm looking at. The <laughs> creature has to already stopped. So this creature has stopped and says, I want that. So I don't know what your diplomacy is for, but just so you know where we're at, it is contained within our influence resolution. You've hit your four. So it is stopping its attack unless something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I want to. I want to kind of reason with it, saying that we we have a, a much greater purpose than than where you're at now, and we're not going like to give us your Everston voice. Oh, I'm, I was just going to explain that. <clears throat> oh, explain, explain it, it as Everston. <laughs> 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 join us as grave lighters. You will be able to continue your mission no matter how many times you're defeated. You will be able to keep coming back. And we, we will be able to save souls. You're offering it a grave lighter spot? I can't wait till Foxglove sees this. Um, I need to know if it knows what that is. It, it does know what that is. Uh... <laughs> It it uh it, it grabs the hilt and re swallows the blade, uh, and Dovan is grabbing the big. You basically have these like urns on the ground that have fire out of them that kind of fill yep. the area, and it is yep. like picking yep. it up, getting ready to dunk it on it. Um, <laughs> Start dunking. And Olivier's hand goes up, and its hand goes up, and it stops, and Olivier dismisses the creature, and she says in hollow even though she doesn't speak it. She goes, what's a grave lighter? She says, and I'm going to, even though she, yep. I've been lying the whole fucking time. Sneaky, Uh, sneaky. And I'm going to end it there because you inducting a person into grave lighterdom is going to be an amazing thing. And I don't want that on screen. Instead, that's going to be part of our next episode. Holy shit. Not where I thought this was going to go. What the fuck? Well, Listen, man, it's a dude that can track down. I love it. I love it. The stuff, like, no matter where it is, like, you got to have that on the team, right? Yeah, you just got a bloodhound. Like, literally got a bloodhound. And so, if it bites it, if it bites it, it's not yeah. permanently dead. Yeah, so <laughs> like that's- with that, well, yeah, you basically made the best negotiation. Wait, I don't really die? I'm in. So that is it for this episode of Side Quest, everyone. I, again, was thrown for a loop. Uh, by Everston, he didn't get turned to stone the last time I had him on, and somehow he is inducting a spirit as a gravelighter. 
before Foxglove. Foxglove, get uh, shit together. I, I feel, Again, I feel, I, I do, credit where credit is due, though. This was a secret message from Kelly. This is not my idea. This is the, the brainchild of Kelly. So if it goes wrong, I would like to shift the blame her. But if it goes right, I'd say it's a group effort. God. Okay, sure. Uh, with that, I everyone. Think, I think what we're learning is don't ever let Kelly and Todd be on the same side quest. With that, team, everyone. Team formerly dead. They have outsmarted me on this one. That was that was clutch. I uh, thank you for watching this episode of Side Quest. This is episode nine of season two. Kelly, Todd, these are super fun. Uh, fuck both of you. I was not expecting that. That was a great <laughs> left field. And um, we'll see you next Tuesday for. Oh, no, wait, is next Tuesday. Are we off? That would be We're three. Off is there, Tuesday. We're off next Tuesday. Is there three weeks this month? Or four? Uh, no, there's not. No. August okay. there is. August there there's is. There's three. So we're on next on week, Tuesdays. not off. Oh. Tuesday the 27th, we're off. We're off on the 27th. And we're then on the on the 3rd of the August. 3rd. Well, we'll see you on August 3rd uh, for episode 9? 10? Episode 10? Holy shit. Episode the next. Episode, no, I think it's 10. <laughs> I think it's episode 10. Holy crap. No, episode it's nine. Already? No, it's we episode nine. nine. It's episode yeah. nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So thank you everybody for watching, and we will see you in uh, a week. And um, until then, as always, beware, or the tides will find you. Night, everybody. Night, everyone. Night. <laughs> hey, everyone. Look up. Thank you for watching this episode of Side Quest, and we have something special. The season one Warlander patches are finally here. Glow in the dark, only 95 limited run. It comes with a card of authenticity, and we are excited finally to have it in our store. Link down below. And remember, like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends. Because when we hit 1,000 subscribers, we have something special to give away.